Welcome to the channel. We've got another boat design done, which is Marilyn, our 25 foot slipper launch. In this video, we're gonna take a look over the design of the boat and uh, look at some of the things that we factored in there. And we're also gonna take a look through the plans and um, see how they work in uh, comparison to the ones I've done before. So let's delve into the boat and have a look. So we'll start out with a 3D model then. Marilyn, as I say, is a 25 foot slipper launch. So we've got a nice large open cockpit in the center for um, seating of probably four to five people, I would think realistically to, uh, to be nice and comfortable in there, but plenty of space anyway. Typical kind of layout for a slipper launch design, certainly in around the kind of uh, 25 foot region. So that's what we've got. And as you can see, we've completely modeled everything as we do with all of our boats. So the entire thing is planned out in CAD to have a, uh, a fantastic reference to work back to when you're actually building one of these boats. We've done everything right down to little custom set of gauges that I did, which are kind of styled around the um, Reliance tachometer that I had in one of my boats. So there's a look around the boat. Um, modern wood construction as we do with all of our stuff now. So um, this boat is set up to be cold molded. Um, we use all the same processes that we've used in uh, plans before. I'm not going to delve too much into the detail of those because I've shown that in other videos. If you want to look at a bit more detail of that sort of thing, you can take a look at the Temptress video where I did the in-depth plan tour of that. This boat follows exactly the same processes. We use the CNC cut interlock frames. We use jigs to form any laminated part within this boat and um, all the same kind of features. It's the same core basically, but a different shaped boat. So um, modern wood construction, that's the way to go, I feel, for the future of um, designing and building boats like this. So let's take a look at the actual boat and what's, uh, what's going on there. So I think we'll peel the side off the boat first of all and uh, you can kind of see what's going on underneath with, uh, with what we've designed with regards to the drive line. So um, primarily set up to be an electric slipper launch. I, I kind of just think in this day and age, if I was building a slipper launch, electric would definitely be the way I'd go because it's quite a feasible system to put in to get a day's cruise in. Eight hours range is gonna be perfectly achievable with this boat. You're not gonna be going fast. Um, this boat is designed to be uh, displacement speed only. Technically speaking, the boat would actually plane based on the uh, hull design that we have here, but um, she is certainly not designed to be a planing hull. That is probably one of the most commonly asked questions that we get. Um, can people put a V8 engine? We've even been asked that in the boat. It's not possible, I'm afraid. This boat is designed to be a river speed, slow cruising boat. Typical kind of layout of a slipper launch where you've got the engine really far forward. So if you were to put something like a V8 in there, this boat would be horrible and probably quite dangerous. So, um, there's the first FAQ, no V8s I'm afraid. So the setup we've got here is for a Lynch motor. You can see that we've designed everything right down to the, uh, the fixtures to mount the Lynch motor. And then we've got um, a master bolt battery system in there with a, uh, a charger, an inverter, everything you're gonna need to run an electric system. And this has been spec'd for a cruising speed of five miles an hour, which is typical river speed here in the UK. And she'll do that all day long, eight hours I would imagine as a minimum with a little bit of contingency planned into there as well. And you've also got some extra throttle. So she will do more than five miles an hour if you need to um, get yourself out of a sticky situation, get caught in a heavy stream or need to get out of somebody's way. There's plenty of contingency within the power systems there. She's been arranged for a number of different drive systems. So you can see here that this is a um, shaft drive system using a Lynch motor. You can see the uh, shaft drive arrangement there. So that is, uh, that's one option for electric. The other option for electric is to use a pod drive system. And um, we don't have that modeled right now, but it's something that we can create the arrangements for. And basically what that would involve is pretty much taking the rudder fixtures out and replacing that with a steerable electric pod drive system. I personally, if I was building this boat, would do it that way because it's gonna give you incredible maneuverability. If you were to combine a steerable pod system with a bow thruster, you would, almost be able to drive this boat completely sideways into a mooring. And um, that would be pretty impressive, I think, with a 25 foot slipper. So um, that give unparalleled maneuverability, that would personally, as I say, be the way that I would go if I was building one. So um, that's the two electric options that we've got uh, kind of proposed for this boat, if you want to do, um, do that. Obviously electric is quite a costly option at the moment. So if you want to build this boat and you want um, you know, pretty reasonable performance and uh, reliability, but you can't necessarily stretch to the uh, to the full electric package. We've also spec'd a um, 
a diesel engine package. So you can still build this boat with a diesel engine instead. So we'll, um, we'll turn that on and I'll show you guys what that looks like. So utilizing the same drive line, um, the boat can be set up and we've spec'd this for a, uh, a Beta Marine 14 horsepower diesel engine, which you can see up forward there. So it's a nice little package that sits forward, still leaves you a huge amount of space in this forward engine compartment and locker. So you could kind of box that engine in if you wanted to and um, create some more storage up there. You've actually got a lot of room forward in that uh, section there, even with a complete engine package sat in place. We've set the boat up for that. Then you've got a fuel tank aft, just a standard diesel tank there and uh, exhaust system that runs through. So we've planned all of that out as well. Uh, runs in through the ski locker there and then into the uh, forward compartment. So those were our kind of three uh, drive line options that we've uh, worked out for the boat. So it's pretty much got you covered in all bases. However you want to power this boat, it's all, um, it's all kind of doable really, pretty flexible. We've also designed a sun top for the boat as well. So uh, if you're using a slip launch in England, chances are it's probably going to rain on you, even if it's in the middle of the summer. So we wanted to have that covered. Obviously you've got protection from the rain and also protection from the sun as well. So Michelle's designed this uh, really nicely styled sun top that I think really suits the boat and kind of matches its period and styling and um, looks really, um, really good addition. And that's a difficult thing to kind of work out because you've got the the freeboard on this boat that drops off so quickly aft. Trying to get any kind of height um, around this aft section is tricky without it looking disproportionate. And um, we played around with a couple of different methods of doing that, even um, just to get enough height for the seat back actually is quite a tricky thing here because you're, um, you're running out of space quite quickly as that shear line drops off on the boat. That's the sun top anyway, so um, I think that fits the boat really nicely. And uh, again, we can provide patterns and um, any information that you might need if you want to get that made when you do the boat. Seating we've done as well. Slipper launch seating is uh, traditionally these kind of wicker chairs. I have to say, I'm really not a fan of wicker chairs in, uh, in slipper launches. I personally think they look pretty awful and um, I've never actually been a fan of them. So Michelle's come up with these um, seats that are kind of a nod towards the original uh, wicker type seats that you tend to get in slipper launches but a modernization on that process so you can see here by the um, differing laminations and the way that i've just demonstrated those you can see that these are made from two sections of curved laminated timber to form a, a sort of windsor style seat that's um, similar as i say to the original wicker style ones that you'd see in these but uh, a modernized process and um, slightly updated styling as well, which um, I personally prefer. So with all laminations that are shown within the 3D model or anywhere on the plans, I show them in differing timber colors. Now you wouldn't have to do that if you were building the boat. If you were doing these seats, for example, you probably want them to be all the same colored lamination, possibly even resawn from a single piece of stock so that you could barely even see those laminations. I show them in differing colors just so that it's really um, clear and visible to show A, that it's a laminated part, and B, that you can count the laminations and you can quite quickly and easily see what's going on. So that's the reason for me doing that. Okay, so that's the basis of the boat. Uh, let's take a look around some of the construction elements that are involved with that. So as I say, the boat is cold molded. So we've got um, planking illustrated here with diagonal internal layers and then longitudinal planking on the, uh, on the top sides. So the bottom on this boat is three layers of diagonal planking, cold molded, um, exactly the same as we've done boats before. As I say, I'm not going to get too much into the details of this because um, you can see that in the temptress video. I'm just going to kind of skip through and um, show you the basis of things. So everything's much the same as stuff that you will have seen with us before. So you can see that there's a laminated keel, laminated stringers, uh, the stems laminated and um, as I said, basically the same as, uh, as stuff that we've done before. And that is all set up on the strong back in the same way. So we use these uh, lamination jigs to, uh, to form the laminations and then that cuts down and forms the uh, positioning element to put the stem within the strong back system. Exact same way that Temptress has done. If you haven't seen any of Temptress stuff already, uh, take a look at the Temptress plan tool video where I look around all of this stuff in a lot more depth. And then also take a look at the uh, Temptress quarter scale series. So I'm currently building a quarter scale version of that boat to show you how all this process works in detail every step along the way. So this boat follows the same kind of procedures um, as all of that stuff. 
Okay, so the deck again is uh, is kind of cold molded, so you would lay a plywood sub layer and then um, lay your veneers for your, your planking lines over the top. Again, we're using all modern wooden constructions with this boat. So you can see here the kind of layout of the deck structure and how that's going to work underneath the uh, the ply sub layer. Top side battens underneath. And then we're down to our framework. So again, this is framed exactly the same way that Temptress is. Same processes using the frame construction board. If you guys have seen any of my videos before, then you'll see that that's how we uh, set up frames with these boat designs. So we use a dowel system, a uh, peg board effectively, where you just put pegs through the, um, the holes within the construction board and they align with holes within your framework, help you to square everything up and align it. And then um, they generate a reference for your waterline one mark, which is what you use to set up the boat on the strong back. You can also pull off lines such as the center line, which are gonna be good important lines to keep a reference from with all frames. All of that stuff is exactly the same as what you've seen before. And that is pretty much the sum of the boat. So we'll just take a quick look at what's involved with plans. So again, same kind of stuff as before. We've got um, a big PDF drawing, which is um, about 10 or 12 sheets, I think. What we got? Yeah, 12 sheet uh, PDF drawing. And that documents each of the frames that labels all of your parts. So you know what's going on, where things fit, how they're, um, how they're labeled. And um, all of the part numbers here that are listed in the tables, they'll correspond to engravings that are on all of the CNC cut parts. So you can identify everything and work out where it goes. So we've got the transom again, this transom's done um, much the same way that we do Temptress. It's a much smaller transom, of course, in the slipper launch because it's only a really shallow freeboard by the time you get down to the transom on a, on a slipper. So it's much smaller in comparison. Here you can see the strong back system. So this is the way that all the frames are positioned and dimensioning for that string of lamination. So this shows you how the, uh, how the stem is laminated and then the jig gets cut down and um, put into the strong back system. Uh, string of lamination jigs as well. And then we look at sort of um, top side batten installations. So here you can see the, uh, the process for cold mold in the boat. So we've got the um, inner layers for the side, longitudinal planking, and then we've got the three diagonal layers that form the bottom of the boat installation of the uh, keel and the uh, the shaft if you are going with a, a drive line which uses a shaft drive if you're going with a pod system obviously you don't need to drill the uh, the shaft hole and then we're into kind of engine hatch stuff and uh, deck assemblies all the same much the same as what you've seen before followed up by a cutting list so you can work out how much uh, timber you need and how much it's going to cost you so the DXF files, every CNC cut part within this boat comes in the format of a DXF file. And that is shown in this sort of setup. So the way that I've uh, shown stuff before. So it comes in with a bounding box. So as with all of my boat plans, you also get uh, 3D models that illustrate all of this kind of stuff. I think in this day and age, a 3D model is just so helpful to help you um, work out where things are gonna be positioned, how things align, it just gives you a mountain of information which you cannot really convey particularly easily with 2D drawings and, uh, and sort of flat angles and things like that. So um, the 3D model, you don't really have to have an expensive CAD program to be able to do this. Even if you just get a free CAD model viewer, it just enables you to be able to look around the boat and really quickly pick out, you know, oh, this, that's where the spacing of the top side buttons are. That's how that part fits or interacts with that. It just fills in any blanks or questions that you might have. Also allows you to take measurements and reference one thing from another if there's anything extra that you need to get. So we've got two 3D models with this boat and um, that's the kind of jigs and setup one that you can see here. So that shows you the entire strongback setup. That shows you the frame construction board arrangement. And then we've got a hull assembly one, which is the, uh, the complete assembly of the hull that shows you all the planking layers and um, basically how the kind of finished boat looks before you put any shiny bits on it. So there we go, that is a look over the um, 25 foot slipper launch plans for Marilyn. Let me know in the comments below if you guys fancy building this boat, it'd be really cool to see some of these uh, coming along. There is already one in build that started over in the Netherlands and uh, hopefully I'll be sharing some information with you guys about that one soon. Um, it's really nice to see one coming together already, which is pretty good. 
Um, I'm also going to do model plans for this boat, um, same that I've done with uh, Temptress where we've got kind of simplified plans for people that just want to build a model and I'll possibly also do the reduced size um, fully detailed plans if people want to do the kind of pre forerunner sort of thing to the um, to the full size build as I'm currently doing with Temptress. So um, those will follow along fairly shortly. I'll get to work on those soon. But right now, the full size boat plans are um, live and they're on the website. So if you guys are interested in building one of these, go and take a look. So um, yeah, all in all, hopefully a pretty thorough, modernized slipper launch set of plans. So um, I hope to see some getting built. Hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.